When the Boston Celtics fell in the first round of the 2021 playoffs in just five games to the Brooklyn Nets after going 500 for the season and finishing seventh in the East, it was thought that the once bright young team that had championship aspirations needed to make some drastic changes as they by far and away underperformed relative to their expectations with such a talented young core. And indeed, change did happen, but it wasn't in the way most people expected as Danny Ainge surprisingly stepped down as the team's executive, hired then head coach Brad Stevens to take his place and then hired first-time head coach Ime Odoka. But aside from the front office and coaching staff shakeup, the roster going into the 21-22 season was all not that drastically different. Sure, they got rid of Kemba Walker, who was on the decline anyway. They added Dennis Schroeder, who was only there temporarily before getting moved before the trade deadline. But they also picked up Al Horford to rejoin the team, even though at that time this was seen as a whatever move because the last couple of seasons Horford had really struggled to be an impactful player on the court. But outside of that, the Celtics' core had stayed in place. Their young players were continuing to improve, and for the most part, the perception was, is this coaching change really going to be the difference maker for the Celtics without making any substantial changes to the roster? Primarily speaking, in breaking up Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum as there were questions about their general fit, and both players would obviously be incredible talents that could fetch you a lot in a trade. But as the 21-22 season kicked off and wore on, the Celtics appeared to look even worse than they did the prior season, getting off to an 18 and 21 start by January and 25 and 25 about to head into February leading up to the trade deadline and a lot of fans and media analysts believed this was finally going to be the end of the Brown Tatum duo as the last thing you want to see is regression from a team that had two all-stars under the age of 25. Well come the trade deadline and the Celtics still maintain their core while adding some nice role players around them including Derek White, Daniel Tice and something suddenly clicked with this team around the beginning of February and the team went on a tear going from being a play-in team with a record of 500 to closing out the season 26 and 6 securing the two seed in the east and of course you all know went on to reach the NBA Finals before losing to the Warriors in six games. It was one of the biggest turnarounds you'll see in sports for a team that was this close to blowing up their roster on the verge of potentially missing the playoffs had they continued on that trend, all the way to advancing to the NBA Finals. And so far this season, despite the offseason drama of losing their head coach that got them to the Finals, the Celtics have picked up right where they left off and remain locked in, this time on a revenge course to bring Boston its 18th title in the first first since 2008. If you're new to the channel and you enjoy the content, consider subscribing as this is a newly created channel. About 90% of you watching are not subscribed, so I would very much appreciate the support. And in return, I'll be putting out more NBA content like this all season long. Now, one of the biggest shocks of the offseason that came out of nowhere has to be the abrupt suspension from Ime Odoka. I know it wasn't technically abrupt because they were made aware of this early in the summer and were investigating it internally for months, but when it was first announced publicly that Odoka could be facing a significant suspension to then just days later it being announced that he was going to be suspended for the entire 22-23 season, yeah, it was a shock to NBA fans. And right away, you knew that this was bad. Yes, we don't know all the details, we don't know the extent to which Odoka violated team workplace conduct, but but a coach being suspended for an entire season and of course there's no way that he's going to be coming back to the Boston Celtics organization in general that is unprecedented and you have to assume that the behavior was pretty egregious but we'll save judgment on that if and when the facts do eventually come out but either way this was a huge hit to the Boston Celtics who just had this incredible turnaround story to their season, a young team, a first-time head coach, a team that fit incredibly well together, went all the way to the finals, kept their core intact, and in fact even enhanced the team by adding in a two-way point guard in Malcolm Brogdon. This team was on the up and up, already good and plenty of years ahead of them for the future with Tatum and Brown being so young. And then this hits. They're going to lose their coach. A coach that rallied these guys together was the inspiration to completely turn their season around and would be that driving force to help build upon their finals run. And now he's gone. And despite the Celtics hiring Joe Muzzullo, who was an assistant coach under Yodoka and obviously knew the system well being a part of the coaching staff, you had to wonder how this crew was going to respond to a first time, very young head coach, only 34 years old, the youngest coach in the league, even younger than some of the players on the Celtics roster. 
How would they respond to this and how would it impact the culture of the team after Adoka really rocked the foundation of it? To make matters worse, you had it leaked that the Celtics had explored a potential trade with Kevin Durant, which included shipping Jalen Brown to the Nets, which when Brown found out, he took to Twitter expressing his displeasure, especially considering Brown had arguably a better final series than Jason Tatum. Yes, Tatum is the better overall player. He's the Celtics best player, but Jalen Brown is such a foundational piece that without him, Tatum really doesn't shine as bright as we would have seen in the past couple of seasons. So with Brown being included in trade packages and now him finding out about it, you would have thought that's gonna create some frustration and locker room issues if one of your best players, one of your most important players to the team's success is unhappy and feels he's not wanted by the team that he's been giving so much to. Then of course, the Celtics and Grant Williams don't reach an extension agreement, which he was reportedly upset about. So because of all these factors, you have the coach essentially being let go, Jalen Brown feeling like he's not wanted by the team, Grant Williams, no extension deal for him. It's why many thought, including myself, the Celtics were likely going to have a rocky season and be hard pressed to make it out of the East yet again, and especially winning a championship. They would still be a great team, but not what we saw from last season. But so far this season, they have been proving all of their doubters wrong, not only just playing at a high level, playing very well as a team, they're absolutely destroying teams with incredible offense. Last season, the Celtics were still a great offensive team, but where they really excelled was on the defensive end, having the best defense in the East and second in the NBA, only behind the Golden State Warriors. But this season, the Celtics are on such a scoring tear that they are on pace to finish with the highest team point per game average in NBA history, currently putting over 120 points per game, which leads the league and an offensive rating of 120, which also leads the league a net rating of 7.1, also first in the league. They're first in the league in threes made, fourth in three point shooting percentage. That rate at which they're able to hit threes on that high of volume is insane. Also second in the league in effective field goal percentage. Again, all of these statistics are based on the time of this recording. They take care of the ball, one of the best teams in the league in turnovers, one of the best shot blocking teams in the league being in the top 10 like it's really no wonder these guys have the best record in the league of course it is early like we're not even a quarter of the way into the season but with the way the team is absolutely locked in playing incredible team basketball scoring at an insane rate Jason Tatum is playing out of his mind and a legitimate MVP candidate putting up over 30 points per game on the highest efficiency of his career one of the highest player efficiency ratings in the league he's also getting it done on defense one of his better defensive seasons thus far Jalen Brown those trade rumors don't even seem to have impacted him all that much he's still an elite level scorer putting up over 25 points per game he's also shooting at a very efficient rate not so much from three but from the field he's actually shooting the best of his career averaging a career high in rebounds as well Malcolm Brogdon has been a solid pickup for them coming off the bench. Marcus Smart, in addition to his defense, has actually been an amazing playmaker for them this season. He's averaging a career high in assists and by a wide margin at that. Al Horford is still playing well despite this being his 15th season in the NBA. And what makes all of this even more impressive is that the guys are doing all of this without their starting center and Robert Williams III. And I know some will say, well, dude, it's just Robert Williams. But he was having close to a breakout season at the end of last year before getting injured and was a huge piece for them for their rim protection being one of the best shot blockers in the league. He's been improving his scoring in the post, also his rebounding averaging near 10 a game last season. Like Robert Williams is a bigger loss than most people think. And yet they still have somehow managed to be one of the most dominant teams in the NBA in the early going. You add Williams to the roster, and this team is prime to be title favorites. I personally still think the Bucks are going to win the title, but wouldn't it all be shocked if the Celtics wipe the floor in the East and bring home the Larry O'Brien trophy based on the insane start we have seen from them so far this season? Let me know what you think in the comments. Be sure to subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.